Dr. Tara, and this is Hopeful Hints, a podcast where you'll receive quick, hopeful hints on all things women's health and infertility. Here, you will find education, inspiration, and most importantly, find peace and empowerment as you walk through the next steps in your healthcare journey. Welcome to Hopeful Hands. I'm your host, Dr. Tara, and today we're talking about something perhaps you've never even heard of. It's becoming more talked about on social media with patients sharing their stories and experience of being diagnosed with LUTS, L-U-S-S. What does this mean? This is Lutinized Unruptured Follicle Syndrome, LUTS, and it greatly impacts fertility and is being miss all the time. So we're going to talk about it. So we know already this fertility journey is extremely hard, but what this is, and this is not well known, I don't believe. Let's talk about what is loops. So this is a syndrome that occurs when the follicle in the ovary matures and undergoes luteinization. So that's a process where the follicle produces progesterone, but fails to rupture. So it doesn't release the egg. It looks like it should. It looks like it could have. It looks like maybe perhaps it did, but it doesn't. And despite the body undergoing many of those hormonal changes that may be tracked and watched, actual ovulation does not occur. And this greatly hinders the impact of conception. What are some symptoms? Let's take a look. Loops can particularly be challenging to identify because it's like subtle, it's not noticed, and it's not even known by many healthcare providers. Um, but many women with loops may still experience regular menstrual cycles and have signs that indicate ovulation could have occurred. Again, depending on what devices, tracking, labs, all the things that you're doing for your treatment. So it makes it difficult to recognize that ovulation has not occurred. Some may report mid-cycle pain or discomfort. That's a big word called middle schmerz. I did it myself. And I often ask in my practice, do you have any signs of ovulation or pain? And many of you have that. It's, it's middle schmerz. But it's similar to ovulation pain or changes in your basal body temperature. And cervical changes often are also occurring with loose. But the primary symptom, however, is difficulty conceiving. And that it's that. It's like, what else is going on? We just talked about last week about unexplained. So maybe you had every single thing we talked about ruled out. Go back and take a listen to that. Make sure you've had PCOS, endometriosis, thyroid optimization, male factor. You've had everything ruled out. Your numbers are looking great. Loops is a great thing to consider as well. So what is used to diagnose this? And it's a transvaginal ultrasound. That's really the pivotal monitoring piece of this. But we're looking at growth and maturation of the ovarian follicles. So during that cycle, it should grow and in theory rupture to release that egg. That's ovulation. But in cases of loops, that follicle that matures and undergoes luteinization, it does not. Um, we do a series of ultrasounds and we watch these follicles from formation develop and from development to formation. And then did that follicle rupture post ovulation and watching for that. This process typically involves scheduling ultrasounds in the latter part of the back half of the follicular phase just before ovulation is expected. And then we also go into the luteal phase, which is after ovulation should have occurred to confirm, did it rupture or does it still sit in there, sit high? So the time and frequency of ultrasounds is really important, working with a team who understands this. And it's, it's critical to diagnose this as well. So ideally, ultrasounds are performed several times throughout the menstrual cycle just to track that progress and detect that precise moment or failure of ovulation to occur. And then watching also your hormone levels. And again, we do that a lot with just home tracking devices as well. And then watching to make sure that there was actual release of that follicle. So during the ultrasound, let's talk about what's going on. Follicle size and growth. Follicle typically grow to the size of about 18 to 24 millimeters in diameter in before, that's before ovulation. So the lack of size progression or oversized follicles without a rupture are an indication of loose. Then characteristics, let's talk about that. The appearance of the follicle, including its shape, whether it's a fluid, can also suggest whether ovulation is going to happen or it's remain on rupture. 
And then we also look at endometrial thickness. So the lining um, of the uterus and the thickness of it is its preparation. I was describe it as like getting the bed ready to sleep in. And we have to watch for changes of that thickness as well to make sure that the bed is nice and comfy. You've got lots of blankets and cozy for baby embryo to settle into. And so we're looking for those things as well during those ultrasounds. So along with monitoring, like I said, we're in hormonal, hormone testing. Many of you can use your home devices for this. And we are measuring progesterone, estrogen, LH, and a couple other hormones, depending on what else might be going on in your cycle. But elevated progesterone levels without evidence of ovulation on an ultrasound can confirm the diagnosis of loose. And this pattern indicates that the follicle has luteinized, did not rupture. What is causing this? Let's take a look. So the exact cause, of course, unclear. Haven't determined that in many cases, but there's several factors we must consider as well. So hormone imbalance. There's an imbalance of estrogen, progesterone, LH, FSH. This can really disrupt that ovulation process. Inflammation. The thing I preach about in my office, but it's fine. Inflammation is cortisol. Cortisol stress. Stress is cortisol. Cortisol is inflammation. So can it, um, that have high stress? But what about things like pelvic inflammatory disease? Um, if there's something going on in the pelvis with direct inflammation inside your pelvic cavity, we need to take a look at that as well. As well. What about insulin? What are your insulin levels? What else is going on that's causing inflammation or hormone disruption in your body? In our practice at Simply You, we look at hormone, cortisol, and insulin. Every time, every one, every single time, there are dials that we have to continuously be watching, engaging, and tracking to ensure that everything, including your hormones, is playing out to balance. So let's talk about treatment. So this requires truly guidance by just uh, as someone who's super familiar with this that understands this condition and can really help monitor, track, and provide that that direct ultrasound correlation. Um, it's working with again. It's not uncommon for my patients to be seeing acupuncture. We're letting our acupuncturists know, hey, here's where I'm at my cycle. Here's what my Virgos are doing. Can you adjust to that? And really, you know, creating that awareness with everybody on your team that you might have loops, but that you do have it if you do know you have it. And so there's times where I bring medications in. Sometimes we have to bring medications in to encourage the relief um, of that as well. And that might be on um, Clomid or Letrozole to really get that stimulation going and then bring you in a trigger shot to induce ovulation. And so again, loop is very unique. They're it's just something I want to put out there that you really need to put in the forefront of your mind to me thinking like if it looks like you're ovulating and yet nothing is happening and again, everything else has been ruled out or you suspect you're having it, go down the loose road. Simply wellness, we're here for you as well. We do have a full understanding of this disease and really just want you to have all the answers and all the options ruled out. And just awareness on this new term called woofs. Thank you so much for listening to this week's episode.